Alright, what is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we've got some more 2022 kind of NBA free agency news to of course be talking about with you guys. Again, we've actually got a big report coming from Sean Devaney that actually says that other than the Los Angeles Lakers being interested in Malik Monk, a couple of teams have actually come out of nowhere and have risen as teams where he could potentially sign with. Again, one of those teams actually happens to be the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now, again, as most of you know by now, I am a pretty big Cleveland Cavaliers fan. I really try to not be one-eyed or have any type of bias towards any of my videos. I don't think I've really ever bashed any team, really, in any of my videos. Again, I, whether you like the Cavs or not is a very interesting thing, but I am a big Cavs fan, and I think... I have a lot of opinions on Malik Monk that it's just really interesting to see how he is as an NBA player because when we looked at him on the Charlotte Hornets, especially in his last season there, he could barely get a minute. He was getting DNPs regularly, like he was just not playing. And that was because he was, of course, behind Devontae Graham, Lamelo Ball, and Terry Rozier, who they were trying to play all three of those guys for 30 minutes a night. He just couldn't get a game and... Some people just legitimately thought he was washed in the NBA. Some people were like, how is this guy not being signed? Because he's had a lot of promise before. Surely, maybe the, the you know Hornets just had too many guards. Maybe there'll be a team out there, right? Well, yeah, there ended up only being one team that actually offered Malik Monk a contract. And that happened to be the Los Angeles Lakers. And I think, luckily for Malik Monk, they actually had a pretty bad season. You might be like, why would I say lucky for Malik Monk that they had a bad season? And the reason I say it is because I think if everything was going right and Westbrook was playing like they thought he was going to play, Kendrick Nunn, of course, you know, played, and again, he never actually did play. Um, again, those two players doing their thing. Um, a couple other players here and there playing more minutes. I don't know if Kendrick Nunn, uh, I don't know if, I'm um, sorry, Malik Monk would have done a whole lot for the Lakers. But of course, Monk never stepped on the court. Westbrook sucked doggy doo doo. And LeBron James barely had another player to actually help him put up some shots. And that was where Malik Monk kind of came in and averaged 14 a game and actually did pretty well. And now all of a sudden, there are a couple of teams interested in him. Again, I don't know if he will get more than the minimum in free agency because I think a lot of teams know that the reason he played so good on the Lakers was because they didn't have anyone else to put up the shots and who actually knows how he's going to go on an above average team, maybe like the Cavs or the Bulls. Again, we saw what he was like on an average team that had three solid guards. He just didn't get a minute on the Hornets. When you look at the Cleveland Cavaliers though, would Malik Monk be a good option? And this is going to work two ways. First of all, if the Cleveland Cavaliers re-sign Colin Sexton and he comes back, then 100% no. Malik Monk would most likely not be a good option for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Reasons why is they would have, you know, Colin Sexton, Darius Garland, two guards that are going to play above 30 minutes a game. Isaac Okoro, who looks like he's a shooting guard now in the NBA, Probably going to be about 20 to 30 minutes per game next season, especially if they got injuries, he'll play big minutes. You've still got Karis LeVert there that's a guard, um, you know, that again plays small forward as well. He's a big wing top guy. And then, you know, you've got Rondo. Whether they bring him back or not will be interesting. I think so, especially if they, you know, again, can't try and convince Rubio to come back even after trading him. And then Brandon Goodwin, who I think they'll try and bring back on a two-way deal. You'll have a lot of guards there, and a lot of them actually are shot creators. You know, we know Colin Sexton's a very big shot creator in the NBA. Karis LeVert is. Um, again, if you bring back Brandon Goodwin, he's another shot creating dude. Darius Garland's a shot creator, but of course, he's such a brilliant playmaker as well. You've got so many guard shot creators and so many guards in general. Like, if they bring back Rondo or Rubio, whoever it is. Where would Malik Monk get the minutes on that team? That's my very big question. But if the Cavaliers don't bring Colin Sexton back and they end up trading him in a sign and trade, then you're going to need a shot, another shot creator there because losing Colin Sexton, I think you desperately already need to add a shot creator. 
and I'm assuming that guy would be Colin Sexton, but if you don't bring back Sexton, you're going to need another shot creating guard, and I think that's just as simple as that, because look, again, as I said, Garland's there, Levert's there, um, Brandon Goodwin's there, that's an okay three, but that's not as good as Colin Sexton, Darius Garland, and Karis Levert. So, again, you would definitely look to replace a Brandon Goodwin type with a dude like Malik Monk, then, who would be your backup shooting guard, assuming, I would assume, off the bench, um, who would put up some nice shots. And, again, you could probably still bring him in for cheap. I would assume for Malik Monk to want to leave the Lakers, you'd probably have to offer him around 4 to $5 million, which would be about $3 million more than what he's making on the Lakers. It's just that he has found the absolute most perfect situation on the Lakers right now, that it is extremely hard to see him leave. They barely have a shot creator other than LeBron. They're going to want to keep Malik Monk. Again, Anthony Davis is always injured. Um, they're looking to a reportedly trade Westbrook for Malcolm Brogdon and Buddy Hield, who are both two, I think, above average shot creators, who are definitely good catch and shoot three point shooters. And again, Malcolm Brogdon is such an elite defender in the NBA. But I still think there's room for another shot creator off the bench for that team, even if they do make that trade. And I think they'll give Malik Monk the role. And I think he would come back on the minimum. I've heard there's rumors he would look to take a pay cut to play with them. Like if teams did offer him $5 million deals and it wasn't the right situation for him, he would go back to the Lakers because just because it's $3 million less, it is the right situation for him to eventually deserve a longer deal. Like imagine if the Lakers were successful with Malik Monk off the bench and they had this really good team again, then they're going to want to extend Malik Monk to probably that type of deal that he would eventually like to see. But if not, he still has options because he would be in such a perfect situation for him that allows him to be that extra shot creator off the bench and he would still average the points he wants. But if he was to go to the Cavs on a little bit extra money, but he'd be playing behind, you know, Colin Sexton and Isaac Okoro at that two position, then he's probably not going to get many minutes. Again, and he doesn't necessarily fit into the style. Now, I know he's a... I actually feel like he's an underrated defender in the league. I'm going to say that real quick. I actually don't mind Malik Monk's defense. Maybe it was made to look better than it was because, again, the Lakers' defense was, like, stale bread. But I actually think he's got some upside there. It's just that I don't think Coach Bickerstaff would pick Malik Monk over Isaac Okoro, who's still a young dude that is a terrific defender that just needs to develop his offensive game. There's a lot going on there, and I think Malik Monk would be a good player for the Cavaliers just if they got rid of Colin Sexton, which I don't think they would do unless the team offered a good deal. Because realistically, Sexton, I don't know what his value is in the NBA, but if he gets offered too much money, Cavs will probably ship him away to a team that offers him similar money, but would actually be looking to try and do a sign and trade on that deal. Again, we know teams are interested. OKC have been interested for a while. I think they might skip on Sexton now. I don't think he fits their situation a whole lot anymore. It looks like they're trying to go a little bit taller um, and roll Giddy at the point and SGA at the shooting guard in the future. The New York Knicks are still desperate for a point guard next season. The Washington Wizards are desperate for a point guard next season. Um, again, those two teams are, I think, very very capable of, you know, trying to get him. The Spurs could look at a dude like him. I actually think he would work pretty well with DeJounte Murray. That would actually be a really interesting thing we could, you know, maybe see in the future. And again, yeah, those will be the big teams. Wizards and Knicks desperately need a point guard going into next season. I think they will really try and get him. So yeah, it depends what they will offer. But yeah, I think it's going to be super interesting. Of course, if you haven't already, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for the latest NBA news and NBA content. Of course, don't forget to comment your thoughts and opinions on this down below. Do you guys agree? Do you guys think the Cleveland Cavaliers should maybe try and get him a leak mug? Do you guys think they should maybe pass on a dude like him? Of course, I would definitely really like to know your thoughts and opinions on this down below. But as I was saying, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.